Talking about that, quick one to mention this quickly. That I thought was interesting, right? This is a clip taken from your sorry, the no your mum's house from Two Bears Two Two Bears One Cave, featuring Tom Segura and Bert Kreischer, and they had a very interesting conversation, which I think is very illustrative of just how finicky and almost fake and also situational and just kind of dishearteningly disheartening lame upsetting i don't know there's there's something about this exchange that to me illustrated how difficult it must be to navigate around la and just the entertainment industry you have to have a real thick skin you really have to have a real thick skin and you really have to have your mental in like a good place because this exchange is fucking wild in this exchange um burt crasher basically admits that he was really upset initially when he heard that tom segura wasn't going to come to his machine premiere right movie premiere it's going to be a big deal there's going to be all these fun events and stuff and you know part what you call it, it stuff to do on the red carpet but Crasher loves fucking fame anyway, so it was obviously going to be a big block blockbuster event, bloody blah, blah blah. So you'd imagine, with it being a big movie, also a big and a monumental achievement that he kind of done, regardless if you like the movie or not, getting the movie done and out there and whatnot, and big premiere is a big deal. So it would have meant a lot to see his friends in podcasting, the community in comedy scene come out there and support him. So it's really funny this clip because Bert kind of admits hey I was actually really pissed off and upset when I initially heard you couldn't come obviously Tom then decides to come and it's one big surprise and they make it part of the content but this exchange is wild because in this exchange you hear Tom trying to justify why initially he didn't want to come and why it was okay if he didn't come I was like aren't you all you guys meant to be like friends and best buddies and shit like why wouldn't you go and support your friend in this big occasion this big monumental you know thing that they're doing in their career and maybe it might be something that might not be repeated because you know movies are one of those things where if it, if it doesn't make money the first time they're not going to give you a second chance so this is a pretty much a one chance and done type of thing you can't say i'm going to come to your next premiere because it might not be another premiere but anyway regardless if there is a, what, another premiere just come to this one and support me because you're my friend and we clearly get along and we're work colleagues and clearly whatever family friends whatever close relationship so just hearing these guys have to like do the whole la dance thing it's fucking really really sad i'm not gonna lie because you don't ever really know who your friends are in this type of scene because when it comes to a moment where you feel like your friends should be there for you they just make up excuses that they got shows and shit like because i was wondering of myself like why wasn't joe rogan there at the fucking machine premiere why wasn't, I don't know, all those guys that go on their shows and stuff that are around these guys that they all pretend that they're friends and they gig around each other. Like, why weren't they there at that premiere? Why would they make the effort to go and all hang out and make it a big fucking thing, like, and support their guy? It's just weird that they none of them were there and it was mostly his family and other celebrities that just wanted to be seen and shit, but there wasn't that many comedians. Anyway, let's kind of listen to the exchange between these guys because I find it fascinating. Yeah, Five times, stories a yeah. hundred times and you're just like, you're like, oh God. Yeah. Well, well and, and let's let's just get to the real meat of this. Me surprising you at the premiere. Dude. So that the for people that don't know. For people that don't know. I gotta also say something that I thought about a lot. What? There really is a difference. And this goes for like all people in, in different relationships, is that there are things that are important to some like one person in a relationship that's yeah. not important to the other person. And sometimes you have to like, like what I mean is I am not a, what a good excuse to be like a shitty friend. Isn't it? Like, <laughs> because I don't care about birthdays, but you do. I'm just not going to come to yours. It's like, what? <laughs> I have a birthday party guy. I'm not like, uh, I'm not like your wife and I were just talking about this outside. I'm not really. I, we were just saying, we were watching you do red flags. Yeah. And she God love the interruption, right? I'm telling my story. No, let me tell your story. It could be infuriating listen to this podcast, isn't it? Tom just Tom was saying something and then midway through he's like, nah, I'm just gonna tell you my thing, because I'm more important. <laughs> First Said, date. First date. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. yeah. We're watching you do it. It's a new podcast. And you said it. something and it was something people probably don't know about you and then I, and I just whispered he, that he's dead inside and and christina goes oh you're telling me 
And then I, and then we started, she said, you know, we're identical, right? And I said, yeah. She goes, he can just, and we started talking about you. And I said, you know, and then we started talking about the premiere. Yeah. And I said, I was so, I was so silently hurt. Cause I was like, was one, tell the story from the beginning. So <laughs> what I was trying to say is that there, you come to realize that sometimes you go, well, since, if this is not important to me, I don't mean your event. I mean, going to things like I've been invited to dozens, dozens of mm -hmm. premieres after parties, events. And I have attended, I think counting yours now, either two or three because I have only attended for the person, not for like some people go, Oh, there's a thing. Oh, I don't <laughs> got a lot of time in it. <laughs> okay, cool, man. I'm, I'm honored to have you here. I'm honored that you would select me as a, one of one or two free people that you would go to an event for and support because you don't go to any of them. Like, this is fucking hilarious. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not that person. I'm not going to anything like that. Why? I detest events and th like, I just don't have a good time. I'm also, I was telling somebody about, as I get to the story, I go, the difference, I go, if, if I had been my premiere, Bert would have been like, when's your premiere? And I said, two weeks ago. And you would go, what? I go, I don't, I just didn't bring it up. Yeah. Because, and I'm, I'm trying to say it not like, I'm not saying it's, but it's, I'm saying personality wise, I would just go, I would think that you wouldn't want to go. So I didn't even bring it up because I, I that's so, just how I think. It's so just, I started texting you. I started texting you probably a couple weeks ago, a couple, a few weeks ago when you were in Europe. Yeah. And I texted you and Joe first. I said, I have a private leaving Austin on Wednesday, going into what you want you guys hop on. Joe texted right away. I gotta protect my parks with Ari and yeah. and Shane and, and Mark. I can't do it. I got shows that night. I How does that make any sense? So Bert organizes a private jet to pick his friends up from wherever they're at to fly into LA. I, I guess where the premiere was have was being held to co to come to his event. Private jet to go there. So no expenses paid. Cool, you're there. And Joe in his in his positions that I can't go because I've got to protect my parks or protect our parks sorry the podcast he does with Mark Normand um, Shane Gillis and Ari Shafir but surely if you've got your own podcast you do your own thing and you know there's not a schedule set for the fucking Joe Rogan experience he just records and puts out the shows when he wants to surely you can just cancel the show you can reschedule for another time it's not really that big of a deal and his own comedy club it's his own club he just book himself another time like, why can't you just go make the effort? Like, they don't do anything like outside of just like talking on podcast. And you know, Joe's a good example because he doesn't actually like going on other people's shows. He prefers to have them on his show. I guess that kind of is able to kind of control where he kind of goes and where he says yes or no to. So maybe there's ulterior motives there. But surely, if your friend's got a one-off occasion like this, you just make the effort and go. Especially more so with these guys where they've got jobs that essentially allowed them to kind of create their own work schedules. They get to kind of be in control of their time more than kind of you and I. You and you, you and I in the audience, we kind of exchange our time for like money in terms of salary working a normal job. These guys have the ability of like making money on the go, making money while they sleep, uh, making money in other ways that kind of opens up the hours of the day that they have to do stuff. And because the stuff that they do, they're kind of their own boss, they get to say when they work, when they don't work. So just cancel the show and go to his premiere. But no, nah, I can't go. Private jet picks you up. Go. No, nah, I can't. I've got a show. I can't cancel it. It's like, yes, you can. Just a podcast. <laughs> I appreciate it. Good luck. And then you didn't reply. And then I went, okay. Send a text to you and Christina. Hey, I got a private leaving Wednesday night. No reply. Send a text to you. Hey, man, what is, what's going on with the premiere? And then Tom not praying is a lot hilarious. Joe's just saying, Joe doesn't do anything Joe doesn't want to do. That's why. Yeah, I respect that. I think that's ultimately where a lot of people want to get at, especially if you've worked in any kind of industry where you're kind of always at the kind of mercy of somebody approving you or giving you permission to do something. When you finally get to a position where you're sort of self-sufficient and you get to call the shots and you're not kind of um, beholden to anybody, it is quite freeing to be able to do what you want when you want to do it. But in this case, I think the beauty and one of the kind of benefits of that is that you get to then end up doing stuff for your friends because you got the time now because you're not shackled by the constraints of this or that 
or this corporate overload or this corporate whatever it may be right you can kind of do your own thing so if you can do what you want to do because you've got the ability to do so because of your hard work your talent your perseverance your luck whatever it may be then that should allow you to have the ability to then now do for people the things that you'd wish you could have done but you couldn't because you were legitimately busy doing other things that you didn't want to do and again these are meant to be his friends like quote unquote my best friend like you can't go to his fucking movie premiere you can't ditch your fucking podcast or push it back a few hours and just fly in and fly back out like why not here because in my head there was a number of things a number of things yeah number one is you know secret time we have business over there like we have we have business yeah, yeah, okay, over okay. there like and so i was like I was like, I want to introduce you to everyone. I want to make sure you know everyone. I want yeah. everyone to, you know. Yeah, FaceTime with yeah. people. And number two, it's like, like, I remember saying to someone, I remember saying on a uh, radio show, they're like, so is Tom coming? You're like, I, I go, I don't know. And they go, wait, what? And I said, what do you mean? And then I go, I don't know. I haven't heard from him. But, okay, but to give it full, like, full story. And, and the funny thing about this is that regular working class people, regular civilians, as these like, guys like to call us, and all the fat, lazy paws, like Tom likes to call us, we have way more time to do stuff for other people, even though we have a far busier schedule on a daily day, on a day to day basis. We're working sometimes more than eight hours a day. We have families, you know, we have responsibilities outside of work we have to look after, traveling distances between work and home, take up your time, all these things that you have to do. And you still find a way to kind of be there for your friends when they need you but these guys <laughs> have the ability the privilege the luck the gift um you know and fortune of life to be able to kind of do what they want when they want and they still make up excuses of why they can't do things for their friends and that's completely normal until Bert goes and sits down with radio people who are just like regular people working the job and they're like, hold on, your best friend that you do the show with, Two Bears, One Cave, you're giggling ab with each other about fucking Kool-Aid, you're, you're buying each other birth elaborate birthday gifts, your your wives are clearly friends, like, that guy who's your, you know, you built a business together, like, he's not coming to your movie premiere? It's like, huh? Story. Okay. Full story. Full story. I was in Europe, and I'm not, this is not a good thing, no. but I was there for 40 days. That is, you know, you tour like and a fucking. Like a lunatic. And no, you I, tour, and my like tour you're in World War II. I know, it's, look, the like, tour is you know, over. But one of the things was, I don't even, I think I probably saw one of your early texts and was like, I, I got to try to make arrangements for this. Yeah. And then when like I got home, I have a wife that's not thrilled that I've been gone for 40 yeah. days. My kids are young kids. They're yeah. not teenagers. They're young kids. And they're like. They're like, oh, you, you're the dad, right? <laughs> like, yeah. like it's, it's not good. I'm saying, you know. Yeah. So when, when the idea of like, hey, do you want to come to this premiere in another state? It's not like you're down the street. Yeah. I was like, I don't, you know, bringing it up. I was even like, you know, hey, I'm gonna. It's like, no, you just got home. So yeah. at first, it really was just like, and I honestly, I've, like, been, I gotta curious, tell you I've been curious what the breakdown of this was. Okay, I honestly I'm thought curious to, to when, know when, when I told you, you that, The funny thing is, right. Most likely, with all that in mind, I went on I went on tour for forty days in Europe. My wife didn't see me, missed my kids, blah blah blah. Most likely, they could if somebody called them to do a quick set at the comedy store or the ice or whatever, wherever they live, right? Joe Rogan's club, whatever, right? Just a quick little pop in. He would have done it. <laughs> so the same time you could have used just to kind of go and see your friend at the movie premiere, a couple of hours, few hours. It's the same time you've done to do a comedy set, but that's fine. But then going to a premiere is a bit more difficult. Like these guys, like if it doesn't make money, it really doesn't make sense, isn't it? They don't leave their houses. It's fucking hilarious. When I told you that, yeah. When I told you that, I really thought because I I think people with parents with kids think this way. I thought you were just like, oh yeah, I totally get it, no problem. Okay. And I, and hang, I on, hang on. So let so I then let me back twice it up. about. Let it. me back it up. Okay. When you said it to me the first time, I said. I, I, I really meant it. Totally get it. No worries. Yeah. Totally get it. No worries. And then uh, and then I did press, two things of press, and it came up, and I, and I was like, he's not coming. And both of them were like, what? What the fuck? What, what's happening? And I was like, I was like, I don't know. He's, you know, he just got off tour from Europe. He just got home. 
And they're like, you can't fly out for the day. And, I was, and like, people would make it, people would almost convince me that I should get hurt about it. Well, I understand and so that. Then, and, so, and so it built. Well, and then and then I, I, I said it at the dinner. No, they're not convincing you you should get hurt. They're just surprised that your supposed best friend in the world can't make it to your movie premiere. It's not that difficult. <laughs> With a bunch of people. And they're like, Tom's not coming? And I was like. And mean, but meanwhile, meanwhile, as you're, sa- as, as you're saying that, I am really just like, we talked about it and yeah. you're like, no worries. And I just take you, I take it at, at I, that. I was good. And then it started building. And then Leanne found out. Leanne found out and, and texted. Fucking lost her shit. She Big up Leanne. Honestly, she's an, she sounds like an absolute saint. I enjoy her when she comes on in the pod sometimes. The interactions that she has with Bert sometimes are actually kind of wholesome. And she actually seems like a normal human being, which is really rare within that whole jerry extended universe la podcast adjacent people whatever she actually seems like a regular normal human being which makes it actually all the more surprised that she ended up with Bert. obviously you know we know why they're together and it kind of works and whatever relationship blah 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 he makes money they're obviously in love blah blah, blah. but as a human it just they just seem so opposite <laughs> like clearly but she legitimately is a saint legitimately is a saint and I loved when she fucking called out Ari Shafir for the dosing. And to this day, she hasn't forgiven him about it. He's not allowed around the house. He's kind of, you know, he's banned from ever stepping foot in the Burt Kreischer fucking family home. His kids, his daughters fucking hate Ari because of the mum. Like, I love that she reacted to the whole dosing thing like a normal human would have and didn't just take it as like a really edgy, funny joke. She's just like, no, why, how, do you, how dare you come into my house and basically drug my husband behind his back, knowing all his fucking pre-existing health issues and the fact that he's a functioning alcoholic. Why would you do that? Like, she didn't like it in the slightest in a way that Ari tried to make it a joke and tried to make light of it. She was not having it. <laughs> like, So I like that she also called out Tom Segura in this regard. Like, you guys are best friends. You guys are family. You're not coming to the fucking premiere. Get your act together. Lost her shit. And I said, hey, uh, she goes, is Tom coming? And I said, no, he's not going to make it. He just got home from Europe. She was like, are you being serious? And I was like, I, I wouldn't joke about it. I have no reason to joke yeah. about it. And I really was genuinely, um, like, I was good with it. And then Leanne sent you a text. She sent me a text. You and Christina a text. Together. And, and said, did not include you- me on it and did not tell me about it. And she goes, are you guys really not coming to the premiere? <laughs> and I was like. I mean, I thought we had, I, I thought it. we had, this was, a, you know, worked I, I out. Thought, I, I, I was like, and so now mind you, I've had three builds up. So people yeah. like getting in my head <laughs> so here's the thing. and then Leanne sends the text and then you text me, keep going. The text was even worse. It's well, not- she goes, she goes, are you really not coming? We're like, well, no, yeah, no, she's saying, she's saying, she's saying it, she's saying it to the two of us, by the no, way. Hang on. Let, let's be very clear. You guys didn't reply. Because she said, I never got a reply from them. We replied. No, no maybe yes. privately to her. To her. Really? Yes. Okay. We okay. replied to that text. Christina took, like, oh, yeah. Really was like, hey, he just got home. He's been gone for this long period of time. We don't, you know, for us to leave. Can you imagine what it's like talking to Bert in real life? Because this already is giving me a bit of a headache. I'm going to watch it a few more minutes and we're going to end it. But can you imagine what it's like talking to him in real life? Like you're trying to get through a story, like you're trying to recount a story that includes loads of little bits that you may have forgotten along the way to try and make it interesting and funny. And then he kind of just like jumps in and interrupts and tries to fill in the gaps for you and tries to say his bit. It's like a constant fight. Like he's the kind of guy where you feel like if you were speaking to him in a real life or in a conversation you feel like have you have some i feel some of you guys have had this before we have friends where you feel like you have to kind of rush what you have to say so that they don't, they don't interrupt you you have to kind of either condense it or just rush it out like you know what i mean you have to either kind of cut all the fat out of it to just say it quickly or just rush through the entire long story with no gaps so they don't kind of jump in because the moment you have a pause or like you know what i mean like they just jump in <laughs> and sometimes they won't ever kind of give you an opportunity to get back in again. Like fucking no, it's just, it, it's a, it kind of tires you in your brain because you're f- trying to remember what you're saying. You're trying to remember the, the kind of thread of the conversation, 
You're trying to remember details of the story and you're also trying to preempt this guy from interrupting you again and again and again. God damn it. Eve, for like with the two of us, we have to have somebody come watch the kids. Yeah. Um, we don't have somebody live in that, you know, to, that does. So it's like, a, it's a whole thing. Yeah. And just thinking like, I don't know, that explanation. And then she replied, <laughs> your wife replied. She was like, yeah, I get it. Still, it really is a fucking bummer that you're not able to be here. Oh. And it's a huge night for Bert and all this stuff. And I felt bad in that moment. No, I, I did not. I was not a part of this. As she should, mate. As she should. Well done to Leanne Crasher for making these guys feel bad and um, for not attending the thing. Obviously, eventually they did attend it. I'm not going to tire you with the whole entire thing. Um, but the funny thing, like I said before, just double checking this stuff and going over a few of these clips is that it looked like Tom might have been the only comedian from that crew that was actually there. Don't you find that weird? Like... All these kind of alleged friendships they have, close community, brothers, um, you know, um, what did Brendan call it? The comedy rat pack, all this nonsense. One of them has like a fucking movie made, an actual movie, a legit movie, Hollywood premiere in cinemas. I guess it didn't do well in the box office regardless, but he made an actual movie and they don't go. Hey, yo, big up John Valdez. I appreciate your super chat. Leanne's amazing. She personally cash apped me a refund for one of Bert's shows I couldn't make it to because my special needs son had a meltdown. Wow. Wow. Big up Jared Merrick. Thank you for being a TS. A, a, a tad supporter in general. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you. What? John Valdez. That's fucking amazing. Leanne's amazing. She personally cash apped me a refund for one of Bert's shows. I couldn't make it because my special needs son had a meltdown. That is a legitimately lovely lovely person i've always been a fan i've always been a fan of leanne she always comes across amazing same with um what's her face i forgot her name bill burr's wife there's a few of these wives in the in the scene where you think that they're the reasons why the the guys are successful like they hold it down back home and they also seem to be like actually nice people like legitimately decent people so it's no surprise that these guys are like, successful as well as they are and they they're kind of like the un you know they don't get the the support and love or the recognition that they should but they definitely you know contribute a huge part of these guys success but that sounds like a leanne crasher thing to do to be fair so big up leanne crasher absolute g um and big up you guys well for super chatting and the membership i appreciate you but going back to this little video this is tom segura's video about finally going to fucking burt crasher's premiere and it's obviously a fun funny video or whatever but one thing that was quite striking seeing the clip was that it seemed like Bert was sorry it seemed like Tom was the only LA Bert Crasher friend in the comedy scene that actually went I find that really wild personally and I'm not again somebody that cares about this sort of shit I don't really have a big social group of friends but I would have been legitimately bummed if I was Bert and the only person that turned up from that comedy scene was what Tom only really of of everybody else Where's Ari? Where's all these other? On Ari, probably not a good, good, a good example. But all these other guys that he's having these pod, the guys that he goes on the road with, like where are all these people? So today, uh, Big Belly Bert has, has his premiere of the Machine. Oh come on, don't do that. In Los Angeles, I'm currently in Austin, and I'm. Oh, why is he doing that for? Let's just let's let's refresh it. Maybe it's maybe it's my side of things that's going a bit crazy. Bear with me one second. Yep, I'm getting the wheel of death for once. It's actually running all fucking smooth, and then now, as I play this fucking clip, it's going fucking bananas. Let's replay this once. Refresh this one more moment. So Perfect today, play. Uh, Big Belly Bird has his oh, come premiere on, of the son. machine in Los Angeles. I'm currently in Austin, and I'm oh no. I'm going to surprise him at the premiere. I told my... Why is it doing that for? Hmm. For some reason, it was working perfectly fine before, but it's not working now. Anyway, you get the gist. I move on. Um, it doesn't fucking matter. You understand. People say in the chat, what, um, AZ stealing the neighbor's Wi-Fi? Oh, I thought you said the neighbor's wife. I was like, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> I'm stealing somebody's fucking wife. Anyway, moving on from that one. This clip is fucking wild. I've said it already before, and I'm going to stick with it personally. This is my stick with it point. I'm at the stage now where I 
don't care, right? I don't care about Burt Crasher's alleged um, functioning alcohol. Oh, yeah, big up John Vanders. Appreciate for your $2 super chat. Wow. He only went so he could use it for content. Yeah, <laughs> yeah basically. <laughs> yeah, basically, he made it worthwhile, right? If you're going to go, because he obviously wasn't paid a fee to attend. So if you go, make the content and then monetize it. <laughs> you got to love LA podcasting scene people, man. Only talk to somebody if it's in front of a microphone and in front of a camera only go to somebody's event or go and support them if you can bring along with you a, you know make a, a whole entire vlog thing that you can then you know use as a bit of promo um and whatever to push your dates and shit i fucking love that to be fair i love how brazen it is i'm not gonna lie i love how brazen and how unapologetic that whole shit is uh, weirdly enough 